Wow, what a great group here tonight. If I'd only known that leaving would bring you all out, I would have left sooner. <laughs> 140. All right. <laughs> there is a, there's a message here. That's right. All right. Feel free to stamp, stomp, clap your hands, and by all means sing with any of the songs as we get started. And if you're wondering about when to commit, Lisa Shin will lead you in right out there. She'll take care of you.
just wonderful to be here with you all tonight. It's been quite a day. <laughs> Goodness. It's been a wonderful day, a great day in the Lord, and to be here with you tonight to be singing about God's amazing grace, which can make all of the difference in our lives in so many ways, if we will just allow it. God knows that we need lots of his grace and lots of healing because he is our rock and our fortress. And let's just plant our feet firmly on that rock. We're talking about building our life, building and shaping our life. It involves taking responsibility, making choices. And the choices are ours to make. And the choice that we can make is to build our life upon God, place our trust in him, because he is a rock and a fortress. And it may take a little while and some bruises and batterings to come around to that point where we're willing to accept that. But God's love is always ever present for us. And so his love came down because you know what? Everybody's got a little different story. We'll sing about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
Uh, would like to introduce to you the folks that are standing and sitting and whatever up here and playing and singing with us. And as I do, I'm going to ask you all to just go ahead and move out into the congregation and sit down because we have some things coming up that you can enjoy better from out there. First of all, seated at the keyboard is the lovely Sue Ellen Kelly. <laughs> The, the founding princess of this service, <laughs> way back in the year 2000, the fall of 2000, September of 2000 is when this service started. And uh, next is Olivia Snyder, who's newly joined us, and we're happy to have Olivia with us. And she will be taking over the keyboard when Sue Ellen and I move on to other things. Lisa Jo Dunham and her husband Rob Dunham right over here. Glad to have them with us. And right back here on the drums at the moment, we have Ash and Oferio. And let's see, Kyle Unibrock is out here somewhere. There he is, way in the back. Kyle stepping in on a couple of songs. <laughs> Kyle was one of our early drummers, and he's back tonight to share in the joy. So we're happy to have Ash and Kyle on the drums. We should have had dueling drums with you guys tonight, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Ash's father, Jill Larry, is here in Oferio, and he's on guitar. Jason Osborne on the bass. I already introduced Rob Dunham over here. <laughs> Joe Fawcett. Joe Fawcett, the long-suffering, determined that we will get the tempo right. <laughs> <laughs> Leader of the instrumentalists and uh, uh, praise over all of us singers that will come in where we're supposed to. Joe Fawcett. <laughs> 
And we have Katie, who is right here. Katie, you be able to give a hand, great. All right. Jennifer Griffin. And Lisa Rothrock. And I'm Sam Shoemaker, glad to be here with you tonight. <laughs> Now, we, Sue Ellen and I are especially glad to be here with you tonight and sad to be here with you tonight because this is our uh, last service that I will be doing as rector at Trinity on the Hill. And so our last service that we'll be doing. And so if you all want to step on out, I'll uh, take us to the next section of what we're doing. Thank you. Give you a little bit of a break. When we started what was called at the time Generations, and now it's called the Contemporary Service, although lots of people still call it Generations. We had in mind a service that would uh, touch people who had been wounded somehow uh, by uh, the church involvement that they had had, or were somehow finding the place that they might have been worshiping as not being a place that they wanted to continue worshiping, and so they uh, really had nowhere to go. And we thought if we would try to do something that was just a little bit different, that maybe would uh, provide a, a place that was welcoming and uh, where people could come and feel at home. And then as this happened over the years, many people have come to this service and they found they wanted something a little more structured, so they found a way to one of the morning services. And so it's worked the way that we hoped it would, that it would be an, an entrance. And I'm hearing somebody humming, it's probably me where I'm standing. But at any rate, uh, tonight I want us to uh, take just a moment in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are tremendously thankful for all of the people over these past 12, 13 years who have come to the service, who have been a part of the, the band and the singers and leading the service, for those who have been part of the congregation in every way for the opportunity to bring this type of service forward in this community and here at Trinity on the Hill. And this is not the last service by any means, or there's a wonderful group of young people coming up and those continuing and week after every second and fourth Sunday night, I know there will be a service that will continue uh, to be uplifting and leading people to draw closer to you. So we thank you for that gift, the gift of your presence. Be with us tonight as we go into this service that we may be filled with your grace and your spirit and that for some, every one of us, there will be something that will be found meaningful and touch our lives in a special spiritual way. In your precious name, Lord Jesus, we pray to God, our Heavenly Father, through the grace and power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to share with you a reading from the Gospel according to Mark. And I'm just going to turn it around here and... As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Jesus baptized in the River Jordan. Tonight we don't have the River Jordan, but we do have a baptismal bowl and water that will be blessed. That will be for us the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit on two people who are stepping forward to be baptized tonight. They've come to this service a few times and through this experience and being touched by others that they've come to know, they've said, 
we are ready to step forward and make this commitment to Christ. And so they have asked some people to sponsor them. And so I would ask that Joan and her son, Matt, and their sponsors would come forward now. Joan, Eva, Jarrett, and would you all come over to the side? That would be great. Thank you. And the sponsors, come on over to the side as well. And her son, Matthew. And Mother Alicia is going to assist me in the baptism. She knows I'm old and doddering, and I need all the help I can get. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Thank you so much, Miss Joan. Thank you. It takes, us, it takes a village. Thank you. So on the screen, you'll see behind me the questions that I'm going to ask. Now, I'm shaping this just a little bit differently. It says this child, and this is normally what we would ask in the event of a baptism of a child, but it seemed appropriate to ask of those who are standing up with Joan and with Matthew and for Joan and to, uh, for them to, to be supported by their sponsors and for sponsors to agree to step up and to say, we're taking responsibility to journey with you in this spiritual decision that you've made in your lives. And so we ask now the sponsors, will you be responsible for seeing that Joan and Matt, whom you present, are brought up in the Christian faith and life? Or will you, by your prayers and witness, help Joan and Matt to grow into the full stature of Christ? And now, Matt and Joan, I'm going to ask you to respond to these questions, and that's up on the screen behind me there as well. In the first case, we ask for you if you would renounce evil in all of its forms, and then having renounced evil, if you would turn to Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Thank you. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? And do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? And these next answers are even easier. <laughs> do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? And do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? And do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? Uh, and now, will all of you stand? And will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support Matt and Joan in their life in Christ? We will. And let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant, which you'll see behind me. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Well, let us now pray for Joan and Matt who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. 
Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Well, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. We thank you, almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their slavery in Egypt into the land of freedom. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And Joan, Mother Alicia was asked if she could baptize you, and I said that would be wonderful. So, so if you would not want to take off your glasses. Oh. Okay. So you brace yourself. Go ahead. Joan, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope you're not nervous. <laughs> and Joan and Matt, Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon these, your servants, Joan and Matthew, the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. 
So, Joan and Matt, we receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen of the congregation, I present to you for the very first time the newly baptized Joan and Matt, mother and son. <laughs> Praise God, and thank you. And you all may go and sit down, and what a wonderful Mother's Day gift, huh? Yes, from you and to you. Ah, yes, thank you. That's why Alicia is here. She can remember things. <laughs> These baptismal candles that we're going to light from the Christ candle behind me, we're going to give to you now. I'm going to give to you these boxes. Maybe your sponsors would hold on to this for you. Thank you very much. What I would ask is that every year on the 12th of May, you all would light these candles as a reminder of how today you received the light of Christ into your hearts and committed your lives to him and following his way. Amen. Amen. You may blow them out now if you so choose. <laughs> okay. All right. And we have a couple of certificates that uh, we'll sign after the service and give to you, and you may go be seated. I'd like the, the band to come up and join me. We have a song that we'd like to sing for Joan and for Matt for the Lord's leading. I have to say that um, I didn't know these pictures were going to be the background for this service tonight. <laughs> so every time one of them pops up, I go, whoo. <laughs> so you guys, there's been so many secrets going on around here. <laughs> Thank you, TK. Surprises, yes, surprises. Thank you, yes, okay. All right, let's sing our way out of this. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
will stray Though my days are few You gave your life for me So I will live my life Precious Lord, come now and be with us as we gather from all walks of life, each with his or her own story. Touch us tonight with your story, with your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, I chose the title of this sermon, teaching, I call it. I can never remember it. I always have to look at it, and I chose it. Starting all over for the first time. Because I had two things in mind. One, um, I'm starting all over. Sue Ellen's starting all over. She doesn't know that. Oh, you guys will just stay up there. That's fine. 
they didn't believe I could do a short teaching. So, <laughs> so now that they step down, I can do a longer teaching. <laughs> no, I can do a short teaching. So Eldon and I are starting all over as we're retiring. And what's really interesting is people come up knowing that you're retiring. They say, oh, congratulations, um, I think. <laughs> or is that what you're supposed to say? And I don't know. Because I guess in one way, when you retire, you're sort of like graduating. It's like graduation day. You've, you've made it past where you're required to work every day or something. You don't look at it that way? No. <laughs> oh, you don't want to graduate. Okay. <laughs> she, Sue Ellen is worried. She told me when it became evident that I was going to have to retire, she said, I just want you to know I have my routine around the house, you know. <laughs> I said, that's all right, honey. I'll lift my feet when the vacuum goes under them. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Boo, hiss. I, <laughs> I just thought, <laughs> I had to say something. <laughs> what did I? <laughs> I'm not retiring anymore. <laughs> Retired to the garage, yeah, my little apartment out there. We don't have a garage, unfortunately. I'll be out there with the horses and the hay. <laughs> but um, that sense of, I suppose, passing certain passage points in time. And I've talked to some people who are retired. I get different answers to people about what is life like when you retire. And uh, what I learned from Bob here is that, that you know, your, your to-do list gets longer somehow instead of shorter <laughs> as you're trying to do these things. But there are many other ways to, to handle retirement, I suppose. Uh, so in that sense, it is kind of like a graduating. It's a changing from one stage, one station, one approach, one way of life to another. But what I've discovered about it is there aren't any rules about this. I mean, you kind of make up as you go along, I guess. Uh, you may do some work, you may not, you may get paid, probably won't, you may do whatever comes along and, and how you handle it. And so many people have asked, what do you plan to do when you retire? I said, I don't know. You mean I plan? You can plan retirement? I haven't gotten that far yet. Things have been kind of busy the last few months and trying to sort out just what is happening in our lives. And so one thing we know for sure is that we're going to take a little time. One of the pieces of advice as a priest that I give to everyone who goes through a significant transition in their lives or change in their lives is to make your changes slowly. Make your changes slowly because there's a lot of emotion around making a change like this, whether it's retirement or if there's been a death in the family or something like that. And you need to take your time because you may not always be thinking as clearly as you think you are. And so we're gonna make our changes slowly this parish has been wonderful enough to give us a tremendous gift, a gift, a gift of a trip to the Emerald Isle, uh, to Ireland. And I'm told that maybe somewhere around September is a good time to go, so I guess we'll check that out and see. I wondered if that's such a good time to go, maybe everybody else will be over there too, so I don't know. We'll, we'll talk to our, um, the travel agent that's been arranged, who is a wonderful Irish lady by the name of Margaret O'Halloran. Ah, uh, we'll have us a great time, won't we? Talking with each other about the old sod. Me phony and she for real. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the point is that, that in this time of life, it's a time of making a choice of how you're gonna live. And the second reason why I chose the title for the teaching tonight had to do with our baptisms with Joan and Matt. They're changing their lives. They have made a choice tonight as adults to give their lives to Christ, to make a decision as to how they're going to live their lives and as to how they're going to go about making the choices in their lives that confront them. And if you notice, when we went through the baptismal service, the change is not just about, well, I'm going to hope to be a nicer person or I'm going to make a resolve to run every day or lose weight or some kind of New Year's resolution type of thing. This is about saying that I am going through the grace of God to respect the dignity, respect the dignity of every human being. Now that's a nice easy choice when the human beings you're meeting up with are like you. You can respect their dignity. But there are a lot of human beings in this world, thanks be to God, who aren't like me, who are different in some way or other. Different in the life they're living, the life that's been dealt them, and so the choices that they're making in response to that. Different in what their needs are than mine are. And so I have learned to respect 
the dignity of each person who steps up to say, each more man or woman, boy or girl, I accept the life that I have, and I'm going to live it with all the dignity that I can. And we talk also about, it says, whenever you sin. Isn't that a shock? I mean, we're Christians. We're not supposed to sin, right? But strangely enough, we do. Strangely enough, we stumble over our tongues. We stumble over our own two feet. And it says, whenever you sin, whenever you do that which grieves God, grieves his Holy Spirit, hurts others, breaks a relationship, a trust barrier, whenever you do that, go to God and own up to it. That's what repent means, going to God and saying, I did this. I have to take responsibility for that choice that I made. I can't say the devil made me do it. I can't say someone led me into it. I made that choice to follow. I made that choice to stumble over myself and to hurt someone else by the choices that I made. And so, God, I'm asking for your forgiveness as I'm willing to own up to my own stumbling. These are two of the vows that were made at that baptism that, are, that stand out as tremendous challenges to us as we live our lives. So in starting over again, as we made our vows, our promises with Joan and with Matt tonight, that's a time for us to respect the dignity of every human being. That's a time for us to own up to our stumblings over ourselves and to our uh, sinful acts and decisions and choices that have destroyed us, others, and our relationship with God and to experience God's forgiveness to transform us. Then and only then will we be a community of people in which trust prevails. If I can know that you are willing to own up to even the harder decisions and choices that you've made that perhaps have been hurtful to someone else, and that you're willing to respect me and all others, whether you agree or not, but you respect me as a human being, then, and you know that about me, then we have a basis for building trust. Now we have a basis for building a community in which there is love, respect, and trust. Then we can be whole and grow. And then we can be that witness to a world outside which struggles with those very points of respecting the dignity of every human being, struggles with those very points of owning up to the choices that have been made, good or bad, and being willing to seek how to be cleansed and healed from them then we can be a witness to the world that is broken and hurting and lost. And others may be drawn to make the same kind of change that Matt and Joan have made tonight and find in Christ that strength to own up. So let's start over again for the first time, whether it's in retirement or baptism or some other way in your own life. Take a moment as if the band comes back up to join me for going into the the sacrament of Holy Communion, the feeding of us by the body and blood of Christ. And it wasn't as short maybe as I thought it was going to be, but a lot shorter than you thought it was going to be.
sending Jesus, your son, to us, you showed us how much you love us. He cares for the poor and the hungry. He suffers with the sick and the rejected. Betrayed and forsaken, he did not strike back, but overcame hatred with love. On the cross, he defeated the power of sin and death. By raising him from the dead, you show us the power of your love to bring new life to all your people. Glory to you forever and ever. On the night before Jesus gave his life for us, at supper with his friends, took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, and gave it to his friends and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood and the blood of new and eternal covenant, which is shed for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Glory to you forever and ever. Gracious God, with this bread and wine, we celebrate the death and resurrection of Christ, and we offer ourselves to you and him. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and on these gifts, that we may know the presence of Jesus in the breaking of the bread and share in the life of your family and children. Glory to you forever and ever. Father, you call us to be your servants. Fill us with the courage and love of Jesus. That, the, that all the world may gather in joy at the table of your kingdom. We sing your praise, Almighty Father, through Jesus our Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. And all are invited to come forward to receive the body and blood of Christ or to receive a blessing as you so choose. <laughs> 